Today we're going to be looking at PHP and we're going to start looking at form submits. This is something very important if you're going to be doing web design. You're going to want to be able to have users submit information or at least retrieve information from their actions. Uh, and uh, today we're going to be uh, creating a script that does a basic uh, get form submit. So there's two basic types of form submits. There's post and get. Uh, the get type, uh, you may have noticed certain uh, websites, like if you were to do a Google search, um, put the form submits in the URL. And this is nice and easy for some things, and there's also post, which kind of is a little more hidden in some ways. I mean, it's still viewable to the end user, but the URL doesn't get all long and discombobulated, so it all depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, for most people, the get seems to be a little more basic, so we're going to start with that, but we're going to do, be doing some post stuff here soon. So um, I'm going to use Vim as my text editor as always, but feel free to use whatever text editor you prefer. I'm going to call this get.php. I'll hit enter, and I will start my PHP script. I'm going to do, do PHP. And um, basically, uh, the way we check this is we're going to go, let's say we want to get the username. Let's uh, create a new variable user so dollar sign user equals and then we're going to say dollar sign underscore get this means we're looking at any uh f submits that were get submits and uh, then some braces and then we're going to say in here inside single quotes uh user so this is looking at all the stuff that was submitted as uh, as a get form submit and looking for the one that is labeled user uh, don't forget to put our semicolon at the end here. So now we've got a variable called user, and that's going to be whatever the input was. So we'll just echo out, echo, hello, dollar sign user. So let's go ahead and save that. Up here, I'm in the directory with all my PHP scripts we've been using in our tutorials here. I'm gonna hit F5 and you to refresh, and you'll see that we have a get here, get PHP. Now, if I just click on that, uh, we get an error. Not 100 sure, line three. Okay, it's just saying that I didn't, that uh, I haven't given it the, the, the user yet. So up here, uh, so this area error, if you have errors set to show, which I do because I find it easier to troubleshoot, um, it's saying hello, but there is no, no user set. So up here in our URL, I'm going to say uh, question mark user equals uh, metal x 1000. That would be me. And if I hit enter now, we get hello metal x 1000. If I was to put up here Bob. We got, hello, Bob. Um, so you can do that. We can also have other things. We can say, uh, what else do we want? We'll just say uh, phone. So let's say you're trying to get uh, the input of a phone number. Uh, we're going to say get, once again, braces, and we're going to say phone. And in here, we can put the output, the echo output that we do with PHP, once again, is uh, HTML code. So if I put uh, a line break there, with a tag for BR for, for line break, um, we are going to then say echo your oops number is dollar sign phone. Don't forget our semicolon there. We'll save that. If we were to run this uh, by just refreshing up here, we're going to get an error that phone is not set. So here it tells you right here on line four that the, there's an undefined index of phone. So line four, uh, if you're in Vim, you can see down here it shows what line number you're at. Um, so let's go ahead. If you have more than one uh, variable you're inputting, you're just going to separate them by the ampersand, the uh, end symbol. So end phone equals, we'll say 555-555-5555, and we'll hit enter, and it says right here, 
hello, Bob, your number is, and it's, in my case, uh, it's, it's highlighted as a link, and that's because I have the Google Talk plug-in, so I can click on phone numbers and call it. But um, most of the time, that would just show up as regular text right there. So just ignore the fact that this is underlined in blue. That's a plug-in I have in my browser. I should have went into incognito mode. Anyway, um, so that's a first look at that. Obviously, your users are not going to be putting in uh, the, the information up here. Uh, that's something you can do with a basic URL uh, link, if, if that's the case, if you've generated dynamically code on another page. Or you can actually create a form for them to fill out, which is what we're going to do in our next tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, you doing this makes it very easy to get and retrieve information or submit information and retrieve the, the output of that from a website. Um, especially if you're just using uh, something like wget, although, I mean, using post and wget is not that hard at all. But for some people who are new to it, I know when I first started out, uh, get submits were a lot simpler to work out in my mind. It's like, well, I'll just put it all in the URL and then I just w get this URL with the with the variables I, I place in it. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, I've got a lot more coming with PHP. Once we get all these form submit stuff done, we're going to be doing some real cool stuff with JavaScript, jQuery, quickly retrieving a bunch of information to search through stuff. Uh, different ways of doing that and just once again this basically this entire year uh, I started at the beginning of this year around the beginning of this year of uh, making applications uh, based on uh, HTML as the HTML and CSS as the user interface and then using uh, JavaScript uh, as a client-side scripts and uh, and um, PHP as a server-side script although one of the great things about making web-based applications is well there's lots of great things um, one, it runs on pretty much everything without needing to install anything because pretty much everything has a current web browser on it. Um, when you're talking about server-side scripts, if you actually have a server, your server-side scripts, I'm using PHP, but you can use anything you want. You can write stuff in C if you want or C++. It's not really a practical, but if that's what you're good at, you could do that. Uh, you can write them in Java. You can write them in Bash, uh, Python, Perl. Uh, I'm just picking PHP because uh, I like it. Um, that's just personal preference. Um, and as far as client side, I mean, there are little tweaks here and there. You might have to do a JavaScript to get them to work in all browsers, but the majority of stuff, it just works. And if you you can always make these things standalone applications if you don't have the server side, or they can even the server side that communicate, or I'm sorry, client side that communicate with the server side. You you can package these into applications, which I've mentioned. That's what we're getting to. Uh, once we get all this down, we're going to learn multiple ways to package stuff uh, that are either cross-platform, so you can create uh, an application that will run on uh, Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, without having to recompile, uh, or or iPhone or Android. I mean, I don't I don't use uh, you know Windows myself really, iPhone or Mac OS. But when you write a program in any language, well, not any language, because some languages really suck, but when you write a program in, in a good language, um, should be cross-compatible with all platforms in most cases, unless you're getting very low level. Um, and doing it this way just makes it easier. Um, and you'll see, as, as I'm talking, you know, in some cases, you'll be able to just create it and it will just run and everything. Other than that, you might ha have to package it different. And that's the big thing. Uh, people think that you write a program and it's, and I'm kind of going off on stuff now, but you'll see as we get further into this, that you write a program and it's only good for the operating system you write for, and then you might have to rewrite it for another operating system. And once again, that's not really true in most cases. You write the program right once and you write it right, you write it correctly, you write it properly, you write it well. It should run on everything. It's just a matter of packaging it for different systems, uh, whether it's compiled or just packaging it um, and in some sort of wrapper. Um, mainly because of, of GUI displays are different on different machines. That's really the big point. Anyway, I've babbled enough. Uh, I just wanted to give you an idea of where we're going. Um, I, I think you're really going to enjoy this if you're looking to build programs and if you're hoping to do them properly to where uh, they'll run on anything. Uh, and I'm just using HTML and CSS as a front end because that's the easiest. But... Um, that's not necessary, uh, like 
uh, Qt uh, is now ported to both Android and iPhone from what I've read. So you can package stuff, you can write something in Qt uh, and have it run on Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, and iPhone uh, pretty much as they are. Um, you just have to package it as an APK file or whatever an iPhone uh, package file is. Uh, but the program itself would stay basically the same. Anyway, I'm babbling and babbling and babbling. I just really hope that you're excited about this stuff that I've got coming up because I know I'm excited about it. Uh, I've been working with this stuff for a while now, and I'm just trying to share what I've learned. Um, anyway, visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. Check that out. Uh, and definitely, if you're enjoying these PHP and uh, and uh, also, you know, all the web-based tutorials I'm doing, definitely give this video a thumbs up, like it, and uh, comment below. And if you have any questions, please go to filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Again, links in the description. Go to social network, click on IRC, and there's the IRC channel where you can talk to me and other people who hopefully can help you. Uh, try not to ask technical questions in the YouTube comments. Thank you again for watching, and have a great day.